Today we are sharing Bishop Richard Allen's story. As part of the Delaware Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs, Delaware Day 2020. The life and legacy of Richard Allen is both a Delaware and national story. His pursuit for freedom and faith experiences led Allen to found the African Methodist Episcopal Church in America. Born an enslaved individual, Allen was owned by Benjamin Chu of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Chu owned the Allen family, which consisted of Richard's parents and three other children. I was born in the year of the Lord, 1760, on February 14th, a slave to Benjamin Chu of Philadelphia. As a young child, Allen and his family were sold to Stokely Sturgis, a farmer living in Dover, Delaware. Amassing rising financial problems, Sturgis sold Allen's mother and three siblings to lessen some of his debt. Roughly at the same time, Allen and his brother began attending a Methodist meeting at a nearby farm. I joined the Methodist Society and met in a class at Benjamin Wells in the forest, Delaware State. John Gray was the class leader. I met his class for several years. Encouraged by his master Sturgis to continue in the faith, Sturgis and his wife let Allen preach at the Sturgis house. At length, our master said he was convinced that religion made slaves better and not worse and often boast of his slaves for their honesty and industry. As time progressed, Stokely Sturgis converted to Methodism. On one occasion, having heard a sermon preached by Freeborn Garretson, Sturgis had an epiphany and decided he needed to release his slaves. At length, Freeborn Garretson preached from these words, Thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting in pointing out and weighing the different characters and among the rest weighed the slaveholders. My master believed himself to be one of that number. And after that, he could not be satisfied to hold slaves, believing it to be wrong. And after that, he proposed to me and my brother buying our times to pay him 60 pounds gold, silver, or $2,000 continental money, which we complied with in the year 1783. Allen labored cutting firewood and collecting and selling salt in order to amass the stipulated amount in gold and silver. Allen then left his master's house and began a journey that would lead to a strong religious commitment and service. For about six years, Allen traveled the Methodist preaching circuit throughout Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, New Jersey, and New York, preaching both to black and white congregants. Allen walked so many miles to find employment and preach that at times his feet became extremely sore. I walked until my feet became so sore and blistered the first day that I scarcely could bear them to the ground. Allen was invited to Philadelphia in 1786. Once settled in the city, Allen joined St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church, where both black and white congregants worshiped together. He later became an assistant minister and conducted prayer meetings for African Americans. Allen was the first African-American to be ordained in the ministry of the Methodist Episcopal Church. As the number of African-Americans attending St. George's Church increased, racial tensions mounted. On occasions, when they attended the morning service along with other parishioners, segregated seating was instituted. Unhappy with these limitations, the church placed on him and black parishioners, Allen left the church with the intention of creating an independent Methodist church. 
Allen, with support from other African-American Methodist preachers, hosted a meeting in Philadelphia on April 9, 1816, to bring independent Methodist churches together and to form the AME Church. Allen was elected bishop and became the first African-American bishop in the United States. Richard Allen died on March 26, 1831, and is interred at Bethel Church in Philadelphia.